Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Charles Weaver, CEO of MSP Alliance, and I am very privileged to have Mr. Scott Suey, CEO of NetWatcher, uh, with us today. And we're going to be diving right into a very um, important topic on managed security, and specifically how managed service providers are evolving and have been evolving over the last several years, and, and slowly and then more increasingly, uh, adopting managed security offerings to respond to a variety of different needs that are facing uh, the, the end user marketplace uh, globally. And so we're going to talk about uh, how, well, first of all, what, what the demand is, what the opportunity is, what the challenge is, how to solve that, uh, that problem for customers, and offer a, a couple of different perspectives of how MSPs can get um, very much in depth into the managed security space themselves and start offering these solutions um, today, literally. So, um, Scott, uh, welcome and uh, looking forward to the conversation. It's going to be a good one. I am as well. All right, let's kick it off. So, Scott, if I would maybe just to, to frame the argument, it, it sounds, I look at like like this. Back in the late 1990s, the MSPs had a variety of pretty large enterprise types of solutions for their remote monitoring and management. And those RMM tools were, were expensive. They were difficult to use. They required very deep, you know, very skilled people that cost a lot in salaries to, to, to have. And then all of a sudden, the market started building solutions that were more tailored to the midsize and an SMB managed service provider. It, it almost sounds like we're in that type of environment now where the enterprise has long been working in managed security. And only now are we starting to see that filter down to the mid-market and, and even SMB um, type of customer for managed services. W what are your thoughts on that? Well, you're absolutely right, Charles. Um, what what we are seeing right now is a dramatic change in the way security is being offered. And I think if you um, if you look at actually what Gartner's saying right now, they they have a new paper that they have put out. This is the second year for it. It's called the Managed Detection and Response Paper, where they actually call out the fact that automation coming in and security moving to security as a service. Um, it's almost the last frontier. It's the last thing that's moving to a service. And you're seeing it happen rapidly. Gartner thinks that by 2020, 80% of the MSSPs and MSPs out there will be offering some type of MDR solution. Um, and what that does is it, it basically um, takes a little bit of the old model that is being used in the Fortune 5000. Um, automates a lot of the tasks of the um, the security analyst um, because that is the biggest part of the financial equation and and basically produces um, active threat intelligence the the MSPs or MSSPs out there can use to uh, deal with their customers to help them become more secure and um, because of that automation and being offered as a service you can it can now move from the fortune 5000 down into the middle market and even to the smb market and i think um, that you know um, you're going to see a dramatic change in the way that the smb world thinks about security and the msps are perfectly positioned to take advantage of this um, over the um, over the next few years. If you don't mind, Charles, do you, can I show a slide or two here? Of that course, are kind yeah. of yeah. Okay. Um, so the way that we think about this opportunity that I just outlaid, and, and you actually brought up a perfect point with the RMMs. Uh, the same thing is happening here. You know, all the RMMs have kind of moved to the cloud and uh, they're being offered by cloud offerings. When we talk to MSPs or uh, SMBs, and, and we do on a daily basis talk to a ton of them, uh, we find that they all have the same type of stack that's going out there. They, as MSPs have done a great job putting in managed firewalls and managed antivirus or anti-malware. 
Um, they've got RMM tools that, that are managing all the devices for uptime purposes and being able to keep them up to date. They've even got secure D, uh, DNS and uh, secure email out there as well. But what's, what's unfortunately happening is the enterprises have not, you know, they, the Fortune 5000, I refer to them as enterprises on this slide, they have had a much a, a richer stack on top of that commodity stack um, for many, many years. But that rich stack has been way too expensive. Companies like IBM with their Curator tools or HP and ArcSight, these tools are, are way out of the price range for both MSPs or SMBs. And not only that, those tools are typically written for security talent, security analysts, which there's, as everybody knows, there's not enough of them in the world. And if you can find one, they are very expensive. They're 200,000 plus a year for their salaries in the US. And, and so that enterprise stack has never worked in the SMB market or, or in the MSP market. And on top of that, um, you know, the, the SMBs just would, would not uh, be able to operate it if they did have it. And this is the promise of N MDR. Um, and so just to backstop all that, um, I think you're, you'll find that in the MSPs that we talk to, the call on healthcare or call on banks or credit unions, especially regional banks, or even some of the MSPs that call on defense contractors, um, and especially the ones that are in New York uh, because of the new legislation there, all of these MSPs um, and SMBs have regulatory authorities or uh, industry authorities in regards to like PCI DSS that expect these companies regardless of size to have that enterprise stack so that's obviously a big problem because those smbs can't afford it the msps can't afford to offer it yet the regulatory authorities are mandating that they have it so that just shows you all that pent-up demand uh, that's there and that's why we see every day more and more and more msps come to us talking about the mdr uh, solution to manage detection and response solution and sure. and that's what you know we're trying to offer as a company is to be able to offer that make it real easy to install real easy to use and inexpensive hey scott can i ask you a question so to summarize kind of what what you've been showing us on, on the last few slides the the enterprise market has this you know figured out they've been doing this for years the enterprise tools and services are not available to SMB customers or MSPs. And even if the MSP or customer had the financial wherewithal, there, there's just, my experience, there's not a lot of enterprise managed security providers willing to take on smaller clients. Is that also something that you've seen as well? Is just lack of demand, not demand, but lack of willingness by the enterprise MSPs to work at that level. Yeah, that, that's correct. Because it, you know, just take cost of sale, for instance, um, it costs just as much to find a large company that it does to find a small regional bank. Um, and so the opportunity has always been much higher at the high end than it has been at the low end. And so, you know, this, this market in the United States, for instance, has 5 million companies with more than 10 employees and less than a thousand employees and that market is is been underserved um, because of what you just pointed out there yeah so I, I I see it as is just not only even if there was a ability by the SMB managed service provider end user community nobody's offering it at that level and and as you pointed out the I call it the democratization of security threats, meaning that it started with regulated industries. Regulated industries are still a very lucrative place to be in for managed services, but this is spreading. I, I see this, and I'd be curious for your thoughts, it's spreading beyond the regulated markets. What comments, insights do you do you have on that? Yeah, so we're we're seeing the um, the same thing. So, so NetWatcher, we 
we work within the SMB world. That's what we've kind of built our infrastructure for. Even though we we can work in the enterprise world, we we choose to work in the SMB world because of this pent up demand. And we did uh, just like you called out. We we started with the regulated industries, but then we started getting calls from. Um, we had you know it started with uh, companies that were in the supply chain of the big banks. And we noticed something that these big banks, um, and you, you know are the names, they have 10,000 plus suppliers each. And the big banks are saying, okay, Target was breached by an HVAC vendor. That's somebody, in, that's a company in their supply chain. Um, what do we have in our supply chain that could be weak? And so, you know, if you think about a bank supply chain, it starts with the lawyers and accountants, but then it goes to, you know, anybody that has access to the network, anybody that has access to the data. And so we're seeing construction companies, we're seeing manufacturing companies, uh, agricultural companies come to us saying our bank uh, customer is mandating that we do an enterprise stack and we really don't know what to do. So it's not just the regulated industries anymore. Um, you know, like for one big example that is the law firms. Law firms, there really isn't any regulated authority that mandates security. Um, the ABA makes recommendations, but they don't, you know, they don't mandate anything. But lawyers are being hit left and right because they have very important data from their customers. They have contracts. They have intellectual property. They're creating the patents for these large companies. So law firms are getting inundated with requests for um, advanced security. And so we're bringing on a ton of law firms um, because of that problem. But it's not just law firms. It's accounting firms. It's, it's every organization. And I think what you're going to find and what we're seeing in New York is just the start of it. New York in March um, had a uh, new compliance mandate that the state put out called um, New York uh, NYCRR 500. And it's for any company that does business in the state of New York around financial services, banking, or insurance has to have an enterprise stack and a bunch of good security policies around it. And we're already seeing other states start adopt a similar mandate that will go into law. You're seeing it in Colorado, you're seeing it in California, and you're going to see it spread across the entire United States. That means everybody's going to have to do this. And that's why it's going to be such a great opportunity for MSPs over the next couple of years. Yeah. So, I mean, for the MSPs out there that are, are still on the fence, I, I think Scott just presented probably at least three or four compelling reasons why you should be getting into managed security. And uh, Scott, we're going to talk about how to get into managed security in a little bit, but just to summarize, it's the regulated markets, it's the regulated states and regions, right? We've already seen GDPR. I, I, I kind of look at the, the New York the New York law is kind of a mini GDPR for, for that state and other states are definitely going down that path. Um, the, and just the general ransomware uh, environment that we all live in has brought awareness to this issue of data privacy security to a to the forefront. I, I just think that it's hard not to find someone who is aware of this now. Um, you know, it's kind of just escaped the, the 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 confines of regulated markets, and it's now everywhere you look. That's right. Absolutely. So why don't you walk us through, you know, I know you had some slides there about what are the some, some of the next steps for how to get into this, this space? Like what, what are MSPs? I get a lot of MSPs talking, well, you know, I don't have any uh, security guys on staff or, you know, what types of tools do I need to buy? What types of advice would you give those MSPs? Yeah, so we, we have MSPs come to us all the time, and they fall into two categories. Um, the first category is their customers are asking them for help because they're the trusted IT provider. They're the trusted 
vendor that has worked with this company for years. And so when the company gets pressure from their, their customer or a regulatory authority to do more with technology and secure technology, they lean towards the MSP. And the MSP has to have a solution or they're going to lose that business to somebody that can provide it. And so we get a lot of inbound from there. But we also get a lot of inbound, unfortunately, from MSPs that have tried to work with an MSSP or they've tried to work with a technology provider that expected them to buy a bunch of technology and hire security engineers. And unfortunately, what those guys find out is they price themselves out of the market to be able to provide these services to their customers. And so we have a lot of inbound from MSPs that have been through that problem over the last couple of years. And it's still unfortunate there, there are companies out there um, expecting you to make a large investment and put infrastructure inside a company and then manage that infrastructure inside the company. And that's just not where the world is going right now. And so they get stuck, um, you know, in that, in that old world. What the first thing I would suggest all MSPs do is understand managed detection and response and what Gartner is calling uh, managed detection and response. They have a great paper. They just put it out in May. Uh, NetWatcher has the luxury of actually being in that paper. The analysts there have predicted that 80% of the market will move this direction by 2020 and become security as a service will be the dominant way of technology in the security world is, is operating. So first and foremost, MSP should understand that and what that looks like because that automation that MDR provides, managed detection response provides, allows them to scale um, across numerous accounts at, at all time, uh, of all kinds of price points, whether or not you're a 20 person firm or a thousand person firm. And that automation is what really drives that price point um, down and makes it scalable. And also look at the MDR providers that offer the MSP a SOC. So you don't have to uh, hire security analysts, which are difficult to find and very expensive. So if the MDR provider has a SOC, that they actually support the MSPs as they um, you know, offer these services to their customers, the MSP can get into this business in a very easy way. Um, we as, a, and as an example, we don't expect MSPs to have any upfront investment. Um, we help them figure out how to market these services to their customers, and we don't charge them until they're built. And we, we have that backstop of the Security Operations Center filled with analysts that support our MSP uh, partners. And, and so you want to look for an MDR partner like that. And um, and then the other things that I would say is, you know, you have to have a good business model getting into security. Um, security is is a little different than offering um, other type of services like backup and recovery. Um, it You know, you're starting to get into the business equation now of risk and risk can be risky. And so you have to have your ducks in a row on what your contracts call um, out for liability. For instance, you, you have to make sure that, you know, you're prepared to do this contractually. And um, the other thing is you want to you wanna know uh, what the profitability model looks like. Um, you can download, a, a, you know, a profitability uh, model spreadsheet from us on our blog. Um, and uh, or you can get it out of this uh, website or this uh, this uh, presentation here, um, and you can use it with any MDR provider that operates something like this. And I would encourage you to do it because you need to know what your pricing is against what your customers can afford, and that's at the end of the day the most important piece, and how what your profitability is underneath that. So we take you through an 11 step process in this spreadsheet that um, estimates the types of issues that you're gonna to need to remediate. And remediation is more of a help desk activity. It's something all MSPs do today. Uh, remediating security issues is very similar to remediating most any other issues. You just need to know how to do it. And you don't need security expertise necessarily to do it. 
Um, so you, the first thing we do is take you through estimating the number of issues, then the amount of hours uh, it takes to fix different types of issues. And in the spreadsheet, we give you defaults that we see across all of our MSP partners uh, to help you through those things if, if you might not know them. Uh, then we help you estimate your efficiency. As you start offering security services, you know, you're a little bit slow up front, but as you get into the year of offering, you get much more efficient at it. Um, then this next step is forecasting how many customers you can bring into the platform, budgeting for the remediation hours, budgeting for the remediation services costs, budgeting for the services revenues as well, and budgeting for, you know, obviously if you're going to do business with an MDR provider like Netwatcher, there's a cost there as well. And then forecasting your revenues, determining your profit, and determining your pricing. That's what every MSP does with their current business plan today, and it's no different from a security perspective. Um, and if you know anybody wants us to walk them through that spreadsheet, you know we, we're, we've done it many times before and, and helped other MSPs build their business model around this. So to, to summarize, the, the I mean this is a this is a business case, right? A business plan, if you will, for. All, adding a new service line to an existing managed services um, firm, which I think every MSP should do and, and pro probably many of them do uh, already. But M MSPs are used to doing things like managing firewalls, antivirus. This is different. You mentioned the risk involved. I, I When I hear risk, I also hear the opportunity for for increased margins and, and higher prices, because if there's risk, then that means that there's somebody hopefully willing to pay for it. Um, how like, technically an MSP wanting to go from a you know generic um, general practitioner model to adding MDR, walk, walk them through what they would need from a do they need to hire extra people or can they do this with their existing technical staff, in your opinion? So I think it, it's dependent on what MDR provider they go with. If the MDR provider is bringing them a secure operations center with analysts that are going to be supporting them, so the, the SOC becomes the MSP SOC, um, then I think that's that's a whole different um game than if uh you know the you're going to be um just providing the service or or the tools uh to do the job um if you're actually provided the SOC and there's limited upfront investment um then what you have to do is think through remediation um and you know what what your contract's going to be like with um the customer some of our uh, and i'll give you the the wide variety of msp business models we've seen around this we've seen um you know on the very let's just take the left hand side we've seen uh, msps just resell our services mdr services into their companies and um and then expect their companies to do the remediation piece. We don't like to do that much, but it's it's an opportunity there. Um, and what they do is just take margin off the resale of it. Um, the next stage up is is getting more strategic, where the MSP actually wants to do the remediation hours. They're already managing the firewall, like you said, the antivirus, um, and they want to offer an additional service. And then they also want to package in remediation hours as well. They can use their existing help desk people for this if the MDR provider is providing them a SOC and support on the back end with the analysts. Because, you know, if the if the person gets out there and they're dealing with a, a command and control bot that is uh, very difficult and it's stealing off the network, the help desk person may need to reach in to a security analyst to bring them into the conversation. That's why that SOC is so important. But at the end of the day, um, the help desk person is on the ground at the keyboard at the company, um, helping them through the problem. And then the, the third type of relationship we've seen MSPs have with their customers is they actually offer not just remediation of malware, they offer remediation of behavioral issues. And at the end of the day, cybersecurity problems are behavioral problems. It's because somebody clicked on a phishing message. It's because somebody used clear text passwords 
to connect to a website. It's because somebody went to a website that they shouldn't have gone to and let a bad actor through the firewall. Um, those are behavioral issues. And, and a lot of MDR providers, including NetWatcher, offer visibility into those behavioral issues. And what an MSP can do is help train the organization on not to do that. So cyber training. They can also offer pen testing. Um, and there's multiple types of pen testing services, everything from, from phishing, to, uh, phishing inbound uh, that they can offer and see who clicks on it to real high-end pen testing of trying to you know, be a white hat you know, hacker breaking into something and, and showing the organization how bad it is. Um, and then to go even further than that, we've seen a lot of MSPs um, offer policy help and so whether or not they bring a law firm in or, or just do it themselves, we've seen them help uh, the organization with uh, policies like, um, you know, encryption policies, password policies, uh, logical access policies, and even the procedure work as well, like uh, incident response plans or uh, disaster recovery plans. And that it becomes great work. And so, you know, this all can be additional margin um, and as you move up that risk stack, just like you talked about earlier, um, risk equals additional margin. And the further up the stack you go there, the more strategic you become as an MSP to that customer as well. I mean, you, if, if I heard you correctly, this is not just about offering a new MDR service line to an existing managed services uh, business. This is opening potential add-on uh, consulting. I, I think that, that that's a huge um, value add that, cost, that MSPs could be taking advantage of to do cybersecurity training for the behavioral issues that are causing some of these breaches, um, not to mention the pen testing and the other types of um, add-on services that, that could flow from a single decision to, to add MDR. I mean, that, that's, that's that right. sounds... I mean, not, it sounds not only good from a business case, but it, the customers need this. Where else are they getting it? They're, they're not. They're not getting it from anybody unless they're going to get it from their MSP. You got it. That's right. So, I mean, Scott, what, I know you had uh, maybe a, a bit more on the slide side. What, what else did, have we not covered that you think the MSPs should be aware of in evaluating MDR as a, as a managed services offering? Well, it's, it's, it's a cut, it's a two edged sword. Um, I think in, I think, uh, what we just pointed out is that this industry of the SMB moving to an enterprise security stack is coming like a freight train because of the regulation you called, you know, it's not just the U S GDPR is a great example of that. It's, it's happening all over the world and it's coming in like a freight train. And when you have, um, when you have you know, organizations like Gartner predicting that it's 80% of the market within the next three years, that's a big deal. So this is going to come really fast. So all MSPs are going to be asked to do this type of thing for their customers. And if they're not prepared to provide it, the somebody is going to be providing it to that customer. And the MSPs, the risk side of it for MSPs is a third party will come in to do it. And the upside for the MSPs, this is a great opportunity for them to become much more strategic in the relationship they have with their customers. So it, it can go either way. And, and we want to work with those MSPs and make it, make it go the right direction for them and their business. Um, I do have a, a slide that I can show you how to work with us if you want to see it. Yeah, no, I think people, there may be a lot of people out there definitely wanting to know more about NetWatcher and, and how you guys operate. All right. So uh, quickly, um, you know, when, when an organization, an MSP comes on board, they, they simply sign a reseller agreement. There's no cost in doing that. Um, we schedule free sales training for their sales staff and free technical training for their technical staff. Uh, it usually takes about an hour to an hour and a half. And, um, you know, they're they they get up to because our stuff's pretty simple to operate. Uh, we've spent a lot of time in the ergonomics and the design of it, and it's written for IT folks, not security people. Um, they uh, the tech training goes really quick. Um, then they we always give 
um, our platform to our MSPs for no cost for their own staff. So they can say with uh, honestly that to their customers that they're using the platform internally as well. And we get them to configure some type of integration with their ticketing system. Like we have a, a great plugin for ConnectWise. Um, literally takes 10 minutes to install it. Um, they install their infrastructure. Um, it's free for them, like I said. And then they begin talking to customers. As they bring, uh, start getting customers interested, we have a deal registration form. Uh, so there's no conflict in our channel. We have an easy order fulfillment form and they fill it out and they, they uh, get everything sent to them that they need sent to them and get everything turned on. Um, and then they install uh, whatever you know, endpoints or, or sensors if they need to. And then their customer starts uh, getting uh, value out of either a customer portal that's deployed if they choose to give that to their customer, or they just use our single pane of glass MSP portal, uh, or just their integration into ConnectWise, for instance, and they begin working the issues with their customer and their business model begins. Um, then they build their customer and uh, everybody's happy. Um, and uh, we have a lot of happy MSPs and a lot of happy customers because of it. And and all of them are now being seen as much more strategic. Excellent. So, yeah, Scott, thank you very much for this uh, for this overview. Uh, you know, anyone who is interested in in talking to NetWatcher, definitely. Um, Scott, what's the best way to reach out to you guys? Uh, website, uh, I'm assuming, is is yep. a good way. We have uh, many contact forms on the website, netwatcher.com. There's also a bunch of videos and uh, you can get to our wiki off of the, off of the website, or um, if you, you know, we have a nice MSP partner uh, link off of there as well and videos for, for the partner. Um, if uh, anybody wants to get access to that spreadsheet that I pointed out, uh, here's the link, netwatcher.com um, with a URL here that they can get to. And uh, they can also reach out at info at netwatcher.com or get us on Twitter at, at Netwatcher or Facebook or LinkedIn uh, and Google+. Plus. Well, I, I, would, I would close maybe with the following statement, which is even if you, regardless of whether you use Netwatcher, this is something that I think is a must have. If, if you as an MSP don't start offering these types of security offerings, you risk losing your customer relationship because Scott, you said it, it if someone else is going to come in and do this, it's going to be a, a gap that is filled by someone. I personally think the MSPs are the perfect uh, group to do it. Um, but that assumes that the MSPs are responsive and actually developing these solutions internally, or if they don't want to do it that way, you partner with a net watcher and you get it done quick and, and you start, you know, you hit the hit the ground running, as they say. Excellent. So everyone, thank you very much for your time. Uh, go visit netwatcher.com to learn more about them. And this is Charles Weaver from MSP Alliance and Scott Suey from Netwatcher. Uh, thanking everyone for their time and uh, wish you a pleasant day. Thank you.